Okay. Wait no notification. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast with our brother, Captain Wali Muhammad, uh, who has given us some amazing information and inspiration previously on other interviews. Please go back and watch uh, the interviews that we have done. He's going to have his own playlist on the People's Podcast so that you can just click and go through all of the interviews that he's ever done. Uh, our brother, who has been putting in work for the nation of Islam and uh, Black people and suffering people all over the world for many years. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum salam, brother Joshua. Yes, sir. And on behalf of myself and my family and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we thank a lot for you taking time out of your busy schedule to always give us some great words of encouragement and some great history as well. And today we have some things from the past, the present, but of course, the future perfect tense that we are, uh, man, we look forward to uh, hearing from. Uh, recently, this uh, past weekend, the entire uh, world stopped for our brother, uh, Minister Jabril Muhammad and his janazah. And we wanted to start right there. Uh, the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan uh, resonated with many of us. And we just wanted to know why, why do you think it was important that the minister uh, spoke the way he spoke for the length of time that he spoke and that he stood for those hours uh, about our brother. Well, first of all, thank you for the honor and the privilege of being on your show. I uh, thank a lot for you and your family and for your viewing audience. I'm very humbled and very grateful. The tribute of or by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to his brother, it will go for a long time into the future, mm. a very long time. You know, Brother Joshua, lots of times when we're with people, they're called contemporary. And, um, you know, when you were a contemporary, you know, you in the grind, so to speak, every day. But the beauty of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is that he can take a contemporary and show you how that contemporary will live well beyond the time that that body returned to the earth. I think so it is in the case of Brother Minister Jabril Muhammad. His impact is beyond comprehension. The state of mind that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was in, which he openly shared, Brother Jabril nor his writing were on his mind. And it had to be something, brother, of great value only from God that could have stopped the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in his tracks and read and then change the course of his life and then change the course of us as a people and the nation of Islam. So the impact of Brother Minister Jabril, as now hopefully people are beginning to acquaint themselves more with his mind, which is represented in his writings, we'll begin to see from a more divine view of the man who is among us in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So, the Janazah was just, it was just a sign, bro. It was just a sign. He ain't sit down. He roared like a lion. He gave us divine perspective on a man that most of us didn't pay any attention to. Mm -hmm. Brother Jabril, always unassuming, always in the background, 
You would even not even know he was there unless you knew him and greeted him. He didn't bother you by giving you the good. Assalamu alaikum. He didn't do that. He just moved around off time with his camera. But boy, what he wrote. And I, I want to say this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad being physically alive. When I heard our father teach it, I believed it. But I grew in certainty of knowledge in it from the writings of Minister Jabril Muhammad. So for me personally, he is one of the greatest men I will ever meet. And if you notice, I'm just gonna say this, this is no vanity. You ain't got an interview with your brother that I didn't talk about Minister Jabril. That's right, that's right. So I'm not a Johnny or Walida. Juanita come lately when it comes to lifting up his writings and his impact on this nation. So the Janaza brother, it should be studied and studied and studied. And to think that you can hear a man of God one time and get it, we are grossly and gravely mistaken. That's all I'll say about that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And Sister Miriam, aka Mimi, and Sister Naima, both in the green, like Salam family. And thank you, everyone who's watching all, of, all around the world. Can't wait to put this on YouTube. Shout out to Brother Musa, Brother Kente Russell, Sister Auntie, all the people who are YouTube family as well, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Okay, the minister spoke about um, Minister Jabril being a, going from being a captain at one point to being a minister. And so that made me reflect on, of course, immediately my father, yourself and being a military captain and focus on the ministry, Minister Rockman, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan being a captain and then going into the ministry. Why do you think that is such a trend? Or why is that such something that we see so happen with the ministers who go from the military into the ministry? The great... Abdul Rahman Muhammad told me one day, I was still brother Jack. He said, Jack, let me tell you something. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me, brother, that God makes captains. He said, but you choose your own lieutenants and some of them are devils, brother, some of them devils. See, God makes captains. Mm -hmm. See, God makes captains. A captain should be one who falls in love with the word of God and the law of God and the discipline that the law of God will produce in the people under their charge. But if you don't know the word of God, how can you really be a good captain? Mm, mm. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So as you study the life and history of these great ones, the law of God, the word of God are actually interchangeable. Mm, mm, mm. You see? Yes, In sir. fact, I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teach, he said, a good captain is a good minister mm. and a good minister is a good captain so the truth is i think i said it before jesus and joshua that's the same fellow yes sir yes sir see one is thought as the greatest man to ever walk spiritual man yes sir but as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us, Jesus, Joshua, Esau all mean the same thing. Mm. See, all mean the same thing. Yahshua. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the discipline that is required of a trainer, in this instance of men, it should be a natural transition to the word of God. Mm. Because if you're not 
a student in the word of God, how do you move men? Mm, mm. How do you do it? You know, I'm just telling you what he said. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to me one day, he said, Wally, he said, I see how well the men respond to you. And I said, Brother Minister, I said, I got my foot so far up their backside that when they open their mouth to give you the greetings of assalamu alaikum, I said, you're going to see the bottom of my shoe coming out of their mouth. Mm, now, mm. we're in the diamond in the airport. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. We're in the airport in public. And as God is my witness, he stopped, bent over laughing in the public. <laughs> well, I didn't mean that I was brutalizing my brothers. I didn't mean that I was threatening them. What I meant was I was becoming so skilled in the word of God that it wasn't, as he said, it's not so much that you submit to what I'm teaching you. He said, I just beat the hell out of your argument and you surrender. Mm -hmm. So I had men around me surrendering mm -hmm. because they knew they couldn't beat the argument that God was giving their brother. You see? Yes, so sir. He said, so he said later on, that you don't order God, request of God, you appeal to God. Well, how do you appeal to God? It's the word of God. Mm, mm. See, the Bible says not by might, nor by power. That's right. By my spirit, thus said the Lord. So the spirit of the Lord is in the word of the Lord you want to be a captain and you don't want to study, then you have already disqualified yourself. A captain should be able to get up and carry a Sunday meeting at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. Without not even blink, have a, a sermon in his pocket because you're learning men. You're studying men. So what moves men? The toughest man, the slickest man. All of us love the word of God. That's why we joined the nation of Islam. That make any sense? Absolutely. So as you study these great men and these noble men in their history, it's natural because the minister is the one who is most responsible for delivery of the word of God in that mind. And the captain is the one who is responsible for taking the men who are attracted by that word and making them what? F-O-I. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Islam, the name given to the military training of the men who belong to Islam in North America. With the help of God, you'll never catch me looking other than myself. F-O-I. Mm, mm. Off F-O-I and not look F-O-I. can't understand it. can't understand. No such thing as you retire or you fell out. We, we, we're using too many words that's not found in the Constitution of the nation of Islam. Yes, sir. Words. Go and read section three, part A, somewhere around page 26 or 27 about registered Muslims in the nation of Islam. These are things that a captain got to know. Constitution of the nation of Islam, you should know it. How can you give justice to somebody and you don't know the word of God? Mm, mm, mm. Elijah Muhammad told us what justice is in the fall of America from the Uline Arena sermon. Justice is the eventual working out of the will of God. How can you be just and you don't even know the will of God, which is represented in his word? Mm. Do that make any sense, brother?
Yes, sir. It makes perfect sense. All right. So Crazy that's a too. natural uh, movement. And I would say, follow the example of the man who is the perfect example for us today. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He is the most perfect example for us today, bar none. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. We're kept you teaching. People are showing you love all across the country. So the straight person says, As some lakum, lakum salam, ma'am. She says, great words, the word, the love, and the law of God. Words are interchangeable. Um, Brother Daryl from Chicago, um, who used to be the DI, um, but Thaddeus brother says, teach Wali. Sister Sandra Muhammad Nett says, uh, beautiful teaching, sir. Thank you. And thank you, everyone who's watching all across the country. I also wanted to ask you about the minister spoke about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad escaping the death plot, but Minister Jabril's knowing that he would escape the death plot. How and why is that important? to our understanding of Minister Bill, understanding when that was going to take place. And, and you know, why, why was that important to us? You know, what comes to mind, Brother Joshua, are two words, belief and knowledge. Belief is good. And you notice in his Janazah message, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talked about belief. Yes, sir. He talked about from the Holy Quran where Allah gives the student of Quran what Allah calls or what the transliterators calls rules of interpretation, right? He yes, talked sir. about those verses of the book that are decisive. He said they are the basis of the book. Others are allegorical. And those yes, in whose heart is a perversity want to make mischief with that which is allegorical, meaning they want to give you its interpretation. But then he cited from Quran that Allah declares himself and give nobody else credit. Say Allah knows its interpretation, but Allah. Yes, and then sir. he said, and those firmly rooted in knowledge, they say, Believe in it. He said they don't know it, they just believe in it. Belief is introductory. Really it is. Allah talks about in Quran in Surah 69, it's called the sure truth. Mm. Allah talks in Quran about three, three, three levels of knowledge. You know, we have to come out of belief. Since Allah is not the best believer, is he? No, sir, no, sir. He's the best who? Knower. And he wants to make us like who? Himself. Oh, how long we gonna hang around that fella called belief? Mm -hmm. Gotta get out of belief. Begin to know things. Minister Jabril, Allah gave it to him. Certainty of the knowledge of the departure of his teacher. That's a hell of a knowledge to carry when the whole nation lacks him. That knowledge. I gotta say this, and I'm not, I'm not, as our father said, I'm not interested in helping you in your hatred of me or your disbelief. Mm. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan asked this fellow, just telling you what he said, and I wouldn't make up a word on him. If you had a pistol to my head, I'd just be dead. But you might want to be careful because what you might want to give this fellow, you might end up getting yourself. There are some that are beloved of God among us, and we don't know them yet. So he says to me, he says, he says, Jack. I said, yes, sir. He said, what makes you a God? Mm. What makes me a God? And again, I'm not trying to make nobody angry. 
And I'm not making up a word. Allah is enough of a witness. And I said, sir, I, I don't know. He said that you can keep a secret, brother. Mm. Think over that. Now here is Minister Jabril. See, we, we, we got to do some traveling and we travel through history. What is the condition of the nation of Islam? February of 1975, when it was announced at 8, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, February 25th, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was no longer among us. Many Muslims lost their lives through insanity because they could not bear to consider that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was no longer physically among us. Many Muslims went crazy, bro. Think about Minister Jabril. Now he has a certainty of knowledge that's undefeatable. <clears throat> he can't tell nobody. He told a few. He wasn't the author of whether they believed or not. He told a few. The great sister Betty in Phoenix. <clears throat> his secretary, I think he told her and her husband. <clears throat> like he did, they're going to have a body, but it won't be him. Who's ready to deal with that? February 1975. See, we got to do like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us in Study Guide 18. When we read about people, we got to try their shoes on. Mm. You got to try Minister Jabril's shoes on, that he has a certainty of knowledge in 75 while he's watching the nation of Islam literally fall apart. War through Dean Muhammad comes in and begins to make change. We had a brother Anthony on. He said Caucasian woman was admitted into the temple. I saw a picture of the man Jim Jones standing at the roster, the man that led many black people to death in Guyana. Many of those were members of the nation of Islam. Mm. How could you turn away from the truth and follow the devil? Minister Jabril, he's looking at all of this, bro. And he has an assignment to get to one man. That's like, man, you're talking about heavyweight assignment. And his knowledge was unshakable. How do you know? His knowledge got the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan not only up, convinced him that his teacher was alive and well. Man, that's a knowledge, brother. Looking at a casket with a body in it. Another man said, no, that's not so. Let me show you why. I don't even hardly believe it today. We'll go on the strength. Well, the minister, you not no liar. Oh, it's way more than that. Oh, man. Because at a certain point, brother, we're going to be challenged on what we claim to believe. And if we're not rooted, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about floods uprooting trees and bringing out the vicious reptiles and animals from their hiding place. <clears throat> when, when the dragon spews forth its flood and they told us that all dragons were fire breathing. What kind of dragon is this that spews water? <clears throat> Very interesting. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> yes, sir. So what kind of flood is coming out? This is why he asked the question from his teacher. How strong is the foundation? Can we survive? 
And then he said, survive means to make it through that which no one was expected to make it through. He said, when a plane crashes or train crashes, the first question is asked is what? Are there any survivors? Teacher. So when somebody says, can we survive? He said, our future is at stake. When you raise a stake, that's a gambling term. Mm. See, somebody's betting on somebody making it. Somebody's betting on most not making it. So from that context, look at the power of Minister Jabri. And this is why our father said that we got to lift his name up to the high heavens. The world would know we are here because of this man. That what he said? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. So that's something there, brother. And we got to not be we have to get away from, as he wrote in the course of learning self-improvement, intellectual cowardice, mm, mm. where we're afraid to go into new areas of knowledge. You know, we listen to the tape and that's it. But the tape, you're going to have to do more than that. We mm, lifted mm. up the pledge card the last time you had me on. Yes, sir. The first thing we pledged to do was the study to improve ourselves. I know men have been in the ranks for 30 years and still can't spell. Mm. Are you serious? Mm. Why is it you won't spell? Some of us in the ranks and still can't read. Mm. This is a fact. I know men like that. I will never front them but they're in the rain. How can that be? How could you ever acquire, get acquainted with the word of God when you won't learn how to read? You think you're gonna get it all from a tape? Mm -hmm. I heard him say, he says, some of you think that I'm dumb enough to think that you're gonna get it all listening to me. Mm -hmm. He said, you got ears, you got eyes, you got a mind, he said, study. You'll be just like the book say, blind in this life and blind in the hereafter. Mm. I mean, think about, can you imagine being in the hereafter and not knowing? Wow. But that's yes, what we sent in ourselves too when we won't study. Mm, mm. So I hope I don't know if that's even near. I don't know. Absolutely, Rick. <laughs> Excellent, Rick. And people are showing you love all across the country. Brother Benny Mahdi, uh, something like Malik Salam. Uh, good to see you, Benny. Uh, hold, still holding strong, representing your family. Please give the greetings, of course, to your father, but Diane and your siblings as well. For the Nader from DC, Assalamu alaikum, Salam, sir. For the Daryl says we all owe. Uh, but Jabril, a debt of gratitude. The share press says, "Do others?" Has she said she um, a sound back on? Okay, perfect. Boom, the sounds back on. Okay, but Captain, I'm about to go for a quick 60 second commercial break. Uh, they, she said, "Could you? Is there a way the sound was going in and out? Could you just make sure the the microphone is straight on your end?" This is the Jocelyn um, Bailey says ASA. Well, like him We're having a quick 60 second commercial break. We're coming right back to our brother, but the Captain, please let us know your comments and questions in the chat here we go and thank you everyone From the soulful sounds of Otis Redding III to the funkadelic grooves of Batin, this town has produced some true legends. On August 6th at 6 p.m., we gather at the historic Douglas Theater to pay tribute to these greats of Macon. It will be a special night as the all-star band takes the stage. Joining forces, the band will perform songs that were dear to Batin, Jamal Thomas. 
Otis Redding III and Tony Bone Dorsey. Tonight, they come together to create pure musical magic. The guitar effortlessly weaving melodic solos that touch your soul. The heartbeat of the rhythm section driving the groove with infectious energy. The all-star band carries on the legacy, echoing with the same raw passion that captivated audiences decades ago. Together, these extraordinary musicians pay homage to Macon's music legends, honoring the legacies that helped put this city on the musical map. This night at the historic Douglas Theater, we celebrate the spirit of Macon and the indelible mark these greats have left on the world of music. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime performance. Get your tickets now and join us for an unforgettable night of music. Macon, okay. Georgia is Perfect. a city rich Boom. in music. One second. Also exclusively for you, Black Man, by Sister Helen, a book of poetry and spoken word you can get at hrspatrol42 at gmail.com. Sister Sherry, Asiatic Minds, where she teaches STEM to young kings and queens all across the country. She just came on uh, yesterday. Please enroll your child in Asiatic Minds if you want your students to learn STEM virtually. And one more second, we're coming right back. But Captain, so many people are texting me and uh, messaging me on all platforms about this, saying this is powerful. And thank you all for your questions. One moment and comments. K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need any of those services. Sister Miriam's ABC I Love Me children's book and coloring book and now Spanish book. All three available on Amazon.com. Sister Naima's Stay On Point Dance Academy LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country, right here in the studios of Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Kenneth's bow tie maker extraordinaire. He'll ship you bow ties anywhere across the nation. Dr. Henry Carter's King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad's COVID-19 disinfected cleaning services out of Chicago. Student Minister Sharif Muhammad's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, available on adulsharif.com. And lastly, Brother Joshua Muhammad's book, Cleopatra, as well as No Father, No Excuse, both available. Oh, thank you all very much. Okay, right back to Brother Captain Wadley. I wanted to can, ask- can you, can you hear me first of all? Yes, sir, we hear you great. Out. Yes, okay. sir, we hear you. Very good. Yes, sir. Um, and Brother Benny, will do. Thank you. You already know what it is, Benny. Okay, yes, sir. My next question is the uh, Mother Sinetta. And her, because I got three brothers and three people that we have people ask questions about, because we're speaking about Minister Jarrell, but it's all going back to the minister and, of course, Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But Mother Sinetta's um, importance to the rebuilding of the nation of Islam. Well, Mother Tanetta really, you can't write the history of the nation of Islam mm. without Mother Tanetta Muhammad. Not as a footnote, she's one of the most integral parts of the rebuilding work of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mother Tanetta Muhammad, her insight, her study of the number 19, yes, sir. her ability to transmit the high lofty language of Quran into everyday life always amazed me about her. Now this is our mother who read Quran cover to cover every seven days. Mm, mm. Some of us have been in the ranks for seven years, 17 years, 27 years, 37 years. You can put a <laughs> yes, whole sir. lot of numbers in front of a seven with a year behind it and still have not read Holy Quran in its entirety. Just compare that 
So Mother Tanetta helped to fashion not only the study of the women, but Mother Tanetta, her writings are such an integral part. The, I remember reading her books called The Supreme Wisdom. Mm, He's mm. the one that taught me that there were 154 questions and answers in the Supreme Wisdom. You can mm. go and count them if you want them. <laughs> mm, mm. You know, she, she helped me to understand the value of the Supreme Wisdom. Mother Tanetta really helped me to begin to write the answers of the minister Elijah Muhammad that you find in the Supreme Wisdom. Mm. I used to write them every day, every day. Why? Because I just wanted to have something to talk about. I wasn't interested in that. I wanted to be so rooted in this teaching that no flood, no calls for our father's head from those who call themselves Jews could disturb me. Mm, mm. No knowledge of his life could disturb me. You have many who learn, but you learn in a way that upsets your faith. Mm. See, so how do you learn and then turn away from faith? Oh, you may look like you right there, but you gone. Mm, mm. You gone. And that's because we never took the word of God seriously. Mother Tanetta, as well as Minister Jabril, both helped us to take the word of God more serious. Our father being who he is to God and his servant, of course, is the man on the right. But as he mentioned, you know, two articles will never leave the final call. Unveiling the number 19 and Farrakhan the Traveler. Why is that? Mm -hmm. See, why? Mother Tanetta Muhammad, of course, produced our great uh, student minister, national assistant to the most, to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, pardon me, my brother Ishmael. She produced my brother Ahmed, my brother Rasul. Yes, sir. As well as other uh, daughters. Yes, sir. You're talking about a soldier. I think that many people miss the militancy mm, of mm. Mother Tanetta Muhammad because she always appeared to be unassuming. But you think about militancy only means discipline. Mm. What kind of discipline does a person have to have and how much reading do you got to do every day to complete Quran every seven days, mm, mm, mm. not 30 days, seven days. What does she know? And then look at how she helped us in the cultural development of the nation mm, with her mm. plays. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, I think that she had a hand in the development of our beloved sister Margaret. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So look at her work, look at what she did. And unfortunately, we don't read. I don't know why we have such aversion to reading when the people that God has placed before us are nothing but readers. Yes, sir. I mean, really, honestly, how do you not read? I mean, I see many people now, they're going to have 
Minister Jabril's books. I hope you read them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're going to be posing and taking selfies. That's good. We just got to keep it real. We got to keep it a buck. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we just got to keep it a buck. But if we read his writings, as well as the writings of Mother Tanetta Muhammad, May Almighty Allah be pleased with them both. Yes, sir. We'll grow stronger in faith. And what does that mean? We'll grow stronger in productivity. See, how are you going to be productive and don't have faith? Can't do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Mother Tanetta is invaluable. And she is absolutely one of the most integral parts in the rebuilding work of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And her legacy, if you will, it will be here long, 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 long time. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Ray Captain, I have a quick clip I want to share. Uh, on a uh, you, uh, YouTube clip because I want to know what, where you were here, but I want to know why, what you were feeling and how, why, why this clip in particular and what this clip represents of the minister speaking is important to us past, present, as well as future. Okay, one second. One moment. There we go. There we go. called to Putzlan, there's a mountain on top of which is the ruins of a temple dedicated to Quetzalcoatl, the Christ figure of Central and South America. A mountain which I've climbed several times. However, on the night of September the 17th, 1985, I was carried up on that mountain in a vision with a few friends of mine. As we reached the top of the mountain, a wheel or what you call an unidentified flying object appeared at the side of the mountain and I was called from the wheel to come up into the wheel. Three metal legs appeared from the wheel giving me the impression that it was going to land but it never came over the mountain. Being somewhat afraid, I called to the members of my party to come with me, but a voice from the wheel spoke saying, not them, just you. I was told to relax and a beam of light came from the wheel and I was carried up on this beam of light into the wheel. I sat next to the pilot, however I could not see him, I could only feel his presence. As the wheel lifted off from the side of the mountain, moving at a terrific speed, I knew I was being transported to the mother wheel or the mother plane, which is a human built planet a half a mile by a half a mile, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us of for over 60 years. The pilot, knowing that I was fearful of seeing this great mechanical object in the sky, maneuvered his craft in such a way that I would not see the mother plane and then backed quickly into it and docked in a tunnel. I was escorted by the pilot to a door and admitted into a room. I shall not bother you with a description of the room, but suffice it to say that at the center of the ceiling was a speaker and through this speaker I heard the voice of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad speaking to me as clearly as you hear my voice this morning. He spoke in short, cryptic sentences. And as he spoke, a scroll full of cursive writing rolled down in front of my eyes, but it was a projection of what was being written in my mind. As I attempted to read the cursive writing, which was in English, the scroll disappeared and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad 
began to speak to me again. He said, and I quote, President Reagan has met with the Joint Chiefs of Staff to plan a war. I want... Okay, boom. Everyone else, you, can, you get the full clip on YouTube. Uh, the most I'm missing so far, kind of the announcement, 1989. Just you bring it right on up. Okay, Ray right, Captain, uh, what, what was going through your mind during this announcement? And um, how did it personally affect you? And then we'll come to why it's important to us. Well, I was there, and it was September 24th, I believe, 1989. Correct. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan had just concluded a historic Savior's Day weekend right there in Washington, D.C. Mm. Uh, we still called it Savior's Day at that time before the Million Man March or Day of Atonement. I remember very vividly that day because I was honored to escort the mother of the faithful mother Farrakhan to the JW Marriott. Mm -hmm. So I remember walking her right to the front and then I took my position right in the wall that he was looking at. That announcement, <clears throat> he later said to the believers, these words, he said, if you went to Washington for Savior's Day and left, he said, you really blew it. Mm, mm, mm. He said, Savior's Day was a smoke screen for the real reason that I went to Washington, D.C. Now, mm. just think about that. Pass the word smokescreen. Then consider an entire Savior's Day convention being a smokescreen for the real reason. In fact, that day was a Tuesday. Mm. Mm. So the convention was over that Sunday. And he had that press conference on a Tuesday. Mm, mm, mm. We went back to in those days, your dad knowing others know, the Howard Inn was the place that we stayed. Mm. So we went back to the Howard Inn. And on the TV live, on the news, one of the wheels flew right over the White House in broad daylight. Okay. Those words, I knew, you know, I knew instantly what, what was you were playing. As soon as I heard the frequency and the word to porcelain, I knew exactly what it was. Yes, I mean, sir. Yes, sir. I don't really, I'm not operating on somebody else's belief. I'm operating on mine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, the words... are etched in our history. That was September, 1989. However, he said that the full understanding of his more than vision-like experience did not crystallize for him until November, 2017. Mm -hmm where he held a press conference again at the Watergate Hotel. Mm. You ever seen a press conference where a man don't take questions? Yeah, a man doing a press conference, you don't ask me nothing. I'm making a statement. So he said that his understanding crystallized 32 years later. Mm, mm, mm. So yeah, the announcement is there, but you still looking at a man who hadn't fully understood the vision like experience. That expression didn't take place till 2017. Mm. You see? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So, so 
This is why our brother Jabril called his article Farrakhan the Traveler. Mm. See, you looking at him yesterday, but you ain't up in present time with him today. That's right, that's right. You feel me? Yes, sir. Farrakhan the travel is a man, Brother Jabril said, who traveled, but his travel was twofold. He traveled 3,000 miles across America during a six month period. Think about that 300,000 miles, pardon me. Gotta mm. add a couple more zeros. But he said his travel was inwardly also to his Lord. Mm, mm, mm. So the, the article, the column is called Farrakhan, the Traveler. So if you listening to September 1989 and you not paying attention to November 2017, then you missed a man who fully crystallized in the understanding of his more than vision like experience. Mm, mm, mm. That's a good start, September 89. But don't stop there. Get on into 2017. And he always is mentioning why. And why in the more than vision like experience was Minister Jabril with him? And he wanted him to come with him. Mm -hmm. And the voice from the wheel said, not him, just you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's that about? Man in his bed sleep. He told you what out of the body experiences was during the Janaza. Eyes closed. You ain't got the use of no organs. How you seeing? How you hearing? But I would say to all the students, you need to get the announcement. I would say don't stop there, though. Find the address to the 45th president of the United States, mm -hmm. Donald John Trump, at the yes, Watergate sir. Hotel, I believe, November 2017, mm -hmm. where he gave out the where he gave out uh, a gift to 500 members of the press. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. one of the gifts was Dr. Wesley's writing. Mm -hmm. This is a very unique man we're looking at, bro. I mean, this is some sort of human being. We're looking at him. And why not emulate him? What's wrong with somebody saying, man, you man, you act just like the minister. You so stupid to you actually think that's an insult? That's right, that's right. When Allah says he is a perfect example for you. I mean, we're just so crazy on this individualism. It's really psychotic. I'm a uh, me, me. No, man. He said, I is the ninth letter of the alphabet. It represents independence and completion. Mm -hmm. There is no I unless the true I am has come across your being that you may be. Mm -hmm. Too much eyes in our nation, brother Joshua. Too many, man. Since the originator is not here, who put all them stars up? Did he do that? Mm, mm. Or did he, did he just leave the raw material that other gods came after him? Did he teach him? He teach him. Yes, sir. Okay. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Master W. Fahd Muhammad went back and traveled through all the minds of all the gods that ever lived mm, up mm, to mm. the originator of the heavens and the earth. How many gods is that, brother? Mm, 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 mm. And what all the minds of all the gods that ever lived? Are you serious? Then he said that what he came to give us is not the knowledge of the prophets of the past. He said he come to give us the knowledge of the gods of the prophets of the past. Mm. I mean, damn. That's not electrifying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's not stimulating? Oh, man. We got to get into the study, man. That's right. I ain't, we ain't got no books here. 
Me and you, we don't rehearse a script. That's right. It's a fact. Do we, bro? Fact. No, sir. No, sir. Ain't no well, brother Captain. I'm gonna slide this on you. You know, you might want to brush up on it. Ain't none of that. I'm following a man who is the master of the prophets. That's right. That's right. All of them. So how can I be one of his students and be a damn fool? Unless I just want to remain a damn fool. He might have found me that way, but damn it, I'm not going to remain that way. Muslim don't know general orders, don't know actual facts, student enrollment, mm -hmm. ain't dead pick up the supreme wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to do better, Muslims. We got to get into the word because the power of God is in the word of God. Yes, sir. It ain't that you got to read all day, study all day. That man already paid the price, studying nine, 10 hours a day. Locked himself up in a hotel room from his beautiful wife and family. That's right. That's some sort of man, brother. Yes, sir. And after a while, his teachers say, brother, you ain't got to do that no more. Just stand up. But we stand up and ain't did no study. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, bro. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Brother Kathy, you're teaching and people are showing you love all across the country. Thank you, everyone who can, who uh, taps into the People's Podcast on a consistent basis. Thank you for every like, share, and subscription. I mean, and subscription. Thank you for every anonymous cash app. You two people have been cashing at the People's Podcast. I thank, we thank a lot for you all for your continued support. And thank you, everyone who is watching. My next question that we have for you, sir, is I wanted to speak about Brother Wahid because I've had the honor of interviewing him uh, on the People's Podcast, please go back and watch that. Uh, but I wanted to hear from someone else who knows knows him and has watched him. Uh, how important has he been to the rebuilding of the Nation of Islam? Well, Abdul Wahid is always teaching, mm -hmm. always training. As a very young Muslim who wasn't even registered. Mm -hmm. I would study how Brother Wahid would enter the Final Call Auditorium. When you go in the auditorium from the check room, there's a step down. So I would watch Abdul Wahid come in and he had the coldest pivot and salute I ever saw. With all due respect, Brother D.I. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had the coldest pivot and salute I ever seen. Yes, sir. Bam! I said, wow. So I got to get closer to him and he would always lay things on us. You know, I'm, you know, young FOI, I want to frown on Pope. And he said, brother, he said, how many muscles do you use to frown? Mm, mm. And I believe he told me 206. Mm. Then he said, have you ever noticed the Japanese, particularly during World War II, they were the most feared killers. Mm. He said, but when you study the Japanese, they were always smiling. Awesome. Mm. So he said, you can still take care of business and smile while doing it. Mm, mm. I said, whoa. Brother Wahid held many functions in the nation of Islam. When mm -hmm. I accepted the teachings, I do believe that he was the national secretary of the nation of Islam. In many mm -hmm. of the protocols that you see today, he developed them. Right. I believe it was the great Abdul Wahid and the great Abdul Akbar that went and brought the Blue Seas Whiting fish through the Japanese government who fished off the shores of Peru mm -hmm. in South mm -hmm. America. Mm 
mm. a fish so delectable, so nutritious that it never had any fish scent on it. Abdul Wahid would always encourage us to study, always know our general orders and our lessons, mm, mm. always giving me personally words of encouragement. Watch my development. I would call him from time to time and he always had this phrase that he would call me. He told me this. He would say, the great Wali. And I would say, no, sir. And he said, brother, what's the matter with you? Mm. He said, isn't Allah the greatest? I mm. said, yes, sir. He said, so if Allah is the greatest and you come from Allah, then you got greatness in you too. You just not as great as him. Mm. See, and then I found it in the Holy Quran. Allah asked the believer this. He said, what is the matter with you? that you hope not for greatness from Allah. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, let me just, can I say that again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because many of us in the ranks, we just think I'm a private soldier. I, you know, I'm here. Yeah, I'm going to do my papers. I'm a whole soul. So whatever you do. But Allah asks a question of us. Mm, mm. He says, what is the matter with you? that you hope not for greatness from who? Allah. Mm, mm. Every believer is instructed by God to hope for greatness from God himself. Yes, sir. And if you do not do that, then you have to question your own faith in him mm, because mm, he mm. ain't make no mistake and not one of us. And as Minister Jabril would say, you didn't get here by accident. Allah chose you to be a part of the nation of Islam. We don't do a good job in, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said in his sermon, unearthing the beauty and power of ourselves. We got to become archeologists and dig within ourselves and find out what gift from God I got buried in me. Yes, and then sir. Bring it forth to advance the nation of Islam. That make any sense, brother? Makes perfect sense, brother. Has a perfect sense. So that's just a couple of things come to mind about the great Abdul Wahid Muhammad. Very oh, humble, right. unassuming. You never hear him. He speak always speaks. He always spoke with a whisper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wonderful. And Brickhead, people showing you love all across the country. Sister uh, Captain Sultana out of Oakland said she first saw him in 19 San Francisco in 1973. Brother Daryl from Chicago, the other DI who I learned so much from when I was at Muhammad University of Islam, was showing you love as well again. And Brother Daryl, we look forward to you coming on so you can tell us about what it was like being in Chicago during the same time period. Sister Sultana said the Japanese are humble people. And Sister Sherry Pearl says, praise be to Allah for Brother Wahid. Much love for this wonderful brother and companion of Minister Farrakhan. Speak on it. And people are showing love all in the comments. Okay, we, we're coming to you. And thank you for your patience too, uh, Brother Captain. Um, Minister uh, Akbar, you, you spoke about him, but can we have uh, how important he is to the rebuilding of the nation of Islam? Well, I got a personal account with my brother. When I accepted the teachings in December of 1983, I, I was very candid. I told uh, the processing department, processing department, pardon me, that I was not so long ago released from the military, mm. but that my time of service was six years. And so the processing department decided that I couldn't get my ex. Mm. And so they told me to find Brother Akbar. Now, Brother Akbar, of course, was on the roster, but I had to not look for him because he looked like a giant on the roster, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I got, I'm looking for him. I'm coming to the final call every day, looking for Brother Akba. And I find him in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. If you know the final call building on the second floor, the urinals are very unique. They're built in the wall, in the floor. Mm. So <laughs> I'm hollering out, it's Brother Akba in here. He said, brother, that's me. So I told him what my plight was. He said, brother, you go down there and tell them to give you your papers. I was mm. in the military. You don't owe the devil nothing. Come mm. on and help build this nation. Man, I got my papers, wrote my letter, got my ex. Would not have happened without my brother Akbar. Mm. Brother Akbar, in the early days when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was on the road night and day. In, in those days, as he has taught us, he was on the road with Reverend Jackson, up and down America. So many times Brother Akbar would teach the subject on Sunday, the sermon. Mm -hmm. Brother Akbar, at one time was over the ministry class. Mm. And Brother Akbar would have, you had to know all surahs of the Holy Quran. Mm. It's, only, it's only 114 of them. You don't know them? Mm. Somebody mm. said number, you should know that surah's name. Mm. I know you. We don't, we don't do that now. We, we're so modern, you know, we're so modern. You know, we, we're so modern now. So that's, you know, that's not important. Mm. But we've taken the things that are important and made them unimportant. Mm. Mm. And this is why it's prophesied that they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm. And Allah says in the Quran, and they thrust their fingers in their ears. Mm. I don't wanna hear that because we're rushing just like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us about the half original man named Columbus. I think we talked about that one time. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Half original, half learned, half understanding, trying to find a shortcut to peace represented in the lessons as the Pacific Ocean. But Columbus was very arrogant. Mm, mm. He was so arrogant, he didn't even want to admit he made a mistake, even though where he landed, he know doggone well it wasn't India. Mm. He named the people Indians anyway. And unfortunately, some of us are just like Columbus. Mm. Half original, half understanding, trying to find a shortcut. But what happened to Columbus? The lessons say what? He discovered the pole part That's of right. our planet. That's right. That's right. So it is with some of us. We accept the teachings. We come in and we discover the pole part of things. We discover that the moon got two sides. Mm -hmm. We discover that everything may not be how it looks on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. But we don't realize that all of us are in the hospital. All of us have some degree of sickness, some deeper than others. All of us sick. How you not gonna be sick 400 years under an open enemy to God? How are we not gonna be sick 6,000 years under rebellion to God from an open enemy? Yes, sir, How yes, you sir. gonna be sick or not sick 66 trillion years of dissatisfaction and rebellion. Mm, mm, mm. It's in our DNA. So you're dealing with a sick people who have glimpses of God, glimpses of greatness, but we all sick. And so the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in this conversation with Minister Jabril called Closing the Gap, he talked about what? The greatest desire or the greatest attribute that the believer can have today is patience. Mm -hmm. Not wisdom, 
not knowledge, not humility, patience. Mm, mm, mm. And it taught us that the word patience has a Latin root, pati. It means to suffer long to endure. So mm. if you're not willing to suffer long and endure, then go ahead and hit the dough, Jack. It's all right. But that's why we have a revolving door. Because everybody wants to get to glory fast. Mm, mm, mm. Nobody wants to pay the price. Mm, mm, Honorable mm. Elijah Mama said they all want to wear my crown. That's right. That's right. But they don't want to pay my price. Look at the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan. What price has that man paid? He said, I've taken every, every uh, painkiller that the devil got. Damn. And we look at him all this weekend, standing up, standing up for Jesus. Boy, what an example, man. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's what I would say about that, my brother. Yes, sir. Excellent. We've got people showing you love all across the country. So Sana says, um, and the 99 attributes, uh, so that, uh, Minister Aisha from Phoenix says, teach for the captain is just um going to make them i mean he's just going to make them indians absolutely um brother adio my sword captain wali we learn ones truly love and appreciate you always sharing your experience knowledge wisdom and understanding as some like to share pearl says what an amazing informative and inspiring interview um thank you knowing our own history and it helped the foundation we stand is a must we thank a lot for the sacrifice for those that have worked like Islam, absolutely and of course we thank a lot for you as well ma'am um, just, uh, I mean, Brother Captain, I wanted to ask you about, yeah, two more questions, and then we want to let our Brother Captain get some rest, uh, but thank you for your patience, sir. Um, Praise we want to talk about the, the Dells, because uh, those of them know, you know, growing up, that's all I was hearing in my house was the Dells being played, and my father, you know, the Five Heartbeats was consistently on, mm -hmm. so we had to learn all of the moves and all of the songs, and I, of course, you know, just naturally being a DI, of course, is going to be Eddie Kane before the drugs and being a leader. And I was imitating them. And my father was like, you know, the real story of the Dells and Chuck and all these people. And um, I was blessed to see them perform one time at the Apollo as a child um, in New York. I saw the Dells, but I didn't know until recently the connection between you and the Dells. Could you let us know um, their importance to music? Because I'm you know, a big fan of music, but also their uh, connections to the nation the great and mighty nation of Islam. Well, as they're known as the mighty, mighty devs, they were in our treasure in my heart. And they told me they consider me to be a son. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I first met probably the most outspoken Dell. Um, the world knows him as Chuck Barksdale. I was in Harvey, which is a suburb of Chicago, getting my hair cut. My barber had been cutting my hair since I was nine years old. Well, I was coming up near 30, I guess. So I'm in there preaching and teaching and, you know, and, and this, this man with this big old voice jumps up. He said, brother, my name is Charles 26X. Mm. And he showed me a, one of them, I don't know colors well, I think turquoise, very light blue, hard cover, message to the black man. Mm. And he reached in his pocket and gave me a hundred dollars. Mm. He said, give this to Minister Farrakhan for me. So mm. I obliged it. Uh, years later, I met them again. He was coming to the mosque. And of course, your dad was, uh, we introduced him to your dad and all of that. And of course, your dad loved the Dells. Yes, so sir. He yes, made sir. his watch uh, five hobbies like 500,000 times. <laughs> it's not a mean man, please. But this is something that they told me that the movie was based on their life. Mm. And what they did during one of their tours, they allowed the Hollywood producer, 
Robert Townsend mm. to travel with them. Mm -hmm. And they told him stories. This is where the five heartbeats came from. Mm. But they said he made all the money off the movie, the soundtrack, and never gave them a penny. Mm. Mm. Because uh, as, as their limousine company, we all, we, we riding and talking hours mm. and hours. And if it was local concerts, I'm taking them. We riding, man, all of them. You had brother Charles Muhammad, FOI. You had Johnny Carter, the great Johnny Carter was a original Hebrew Israelite. Mm, mm, mm. You had Marvin Jr., the great lead mm. actress. Mm. You had Vern Allison and the founder, Mickey McGill, where they were Christians. Mm, mm. But they survived together for 50 years. They were all inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Can you imagine mm. such diversity, working together, singing together, traveling together, living together for mm. 50 years? Mm. They told me of uh, when Mickey McGill got hurt, his back, he was in traction for months. Mm. They traveled with Marvin Gaye. Mm. They traveled with Dinah Washington. In fact, they were the opening act for Ray Charles. Mm, mm, mm. And they told me, they, all of them, because we riding and talking. Say, man, Ray Charles got so jealous of them, he put them off the bus in the middle of the highway at night. Mm, mm, mm. So they went through a lot. And they argued as brothers do. But their love for one another, man, was just awesome. Just awesome. So we met Brother Charles. And Brother Charles said, hey, man, you in the limousine? Ben? I said, yeah. He said, come on, meet the devs. So I met him out at the park where we grew up at in Harvey. And uh, they were so impressed by my humility and deference for them. He said, oh, yeah. Ain't nobody else driving us no more. So I drove them for 20 years, mm -hmm. 20 years. And I'll say this to you and through you to your audience. Yes, sir. And I told the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan this, that he wanted them to perform during his 70th birth anniversary at the mosque. Mm, I think mm, he mm. called it a pioneer celebration. And he wanted the Dells to perform. Mm. And so when I found out that he wanted them to perform, well, you know, I approached him. You know, I couldn't jack him up. I said, man, my minister wants y'all to perform. What's going on? And oh, but, but, you know, but Mickey McGill, I mean, uh, Marvin Jr. was sitting in the front with me. He called me Big Doe. Hey, Big Doe. So this time, though, the leader speaks, Mickey mm. McGill. He called me Mr. Wally. He said, Mr. Wally, you know, we love you like a son. He said, and we love, honor, and respect your ministry. He said, but let me tell you why the Dells will not perform for him. Mm -hmm. He said, and now I want you to listen because God is enough of a witness. He said, during the Million Family March, we got a call from then uh, director, I believe, Ben Shavis, that the minister wanted us to perform during the Million Family March. Mm -hmm. He said, so we all came to D.C. on our own dime. We brought band members, equipment, everything. We stayed in hotels for two days. He said, we never heard from Ben Shavers. He said, so even though we love, honor, and respect your ministry, he said, out of respect for the Dells, we cannot perform for him. 
Mm. And I told this to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan when he gave remarks during the memorial service for Brother Charles Muhammad. Mm. Mm. And he said, he said, see, Wally, why would they hold me? Why would they blame me? Why do people bring their baggage and leave it at my door? Mm. And he felt bad. But Brother Charles wanted to get a word to our father before he transitioned. Mm, mm, mm. And so the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told me in the call, he said, Wally, guess what? He said, I talked to Brother Charles. <laughs> he said, I talked to him, brother. I said, oh, Brother Minister, that was his dying wish. Mm, mm, mm. He said, we talked, brother. He said, we laughed. We prayed, we read Holy Quran together. Mm. And I told him, I said, I said, sir, Brother Charles told me in 1961 that he held post on the most honorable Elijah Muhammad during the Savior's Day Convention, February 1961. Mm. Now you think <laughs> about Brother Charles, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, world-renowned performer, all of that. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to me, he said, yeah, Wally, that was the highlight of his life. Mm, mm, mm. All the stuff he done, but nothing was higher than holding posts on the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, yeah, he said, yeah, brother Wally. He said, Raymond Sharif taught me how to do the duck walk. I said, you know how to do the duck walk? He said, yeah, but he taught me how to do he was asking for bean pies to the day he transitioned. Mm. I said, brother Wally, don't you bring him no bean pie. The man, he eating through an IV. Don't bring him no bean pie. Mm, mm. But they were such joys. So many stories of Hollywood and entertainer. And, you know, Brother Charles told me that he knew personally he had squandered tens of millions of dollars. Mm. And it was the Dells who first began to fight for the rights to their own music. In mm. fact, they told me that they think they had over a hundred million dollars in royalties that were owed to them that would be paid to their posterity for a long time. Mm. Mm. Because they were getting ripped off. You know, Cadillac Records, the movie yes, Cadillac. Sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, Cadillac was really chess records. Mm, by mm. A, a Caucasian Jew named Leonard Chess. Mm. And the Dells worked for him. Mm. In fact, this is just a little side note. I'm, I'm going to stop. The woman known as um, with the blonde hair. Etta James. Etta James. Brother Charles told me that Etta James her father was a man that played the skipper on Gilligan's Island. Mm, mm, that mm. Etta James' mom, she was in that kind of life. Mm. And so the result of that encounter was Etta James. Mm. Now I know that Etta James was a registered MGT. That's right. Under the most honorable Elijah Muhammad registered under his lead minister in New York, I mm. think in the 60s. Mm, mm. And she came back when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan recaptured the mosque and did all the wonderful drapery, beautiful, exquisite drapery under the name of Sister Ruth. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh man, they were just full of great stories of our entertainers. Wait, I gotta ask you, gotta ask you, hold on, hold up. So the sister Ruth with the blonde hair used to do this, this stuff? That's at a that MGT. Yeah. That was at a James? Yes, sir. I never knew that. Oh, I see, said the blind man to his <laughs> deaf wife as he covered his eyes from the sun. <laughs> I just hit you with something. <laughs> man. This whole, I would have walked up to her and said, at last. I would have said, if I would know that's who that was, I didn't know, Sister Ruth. They, they, 
they featured her song on one of these commercials about Google a little while ago. Mm. About she said, "I want security." That's mm. Eddie James, man. Mm. Mm. Brother, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad through his ministers rock Black America. Yes, sir. Because his ministers didn't deviate from his message. Mm. Yeah, I said it. Follow the man that's in front of you and stop coming up with what you think is yours. Mm, mm. The man gave us a world to teach from. Mm. But like he said, we always want something new because we don't know how to extract and exhaust what we already got. How you gonna outlast the wisdom of God? Mm, mm. He said, I am the eternal door. To that's the right, that's eternal right. Eternal father. Eternal mean a hell of a long time, don't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Allah says what? And what man would enter into a house not by its door except the thief? Mm, mm, mm. Everybody want to get to the house, but you don't want to use the door. Damn mm, thieves. Mm. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, so anyway, about them Dells, man. Great, <laughs> great brothers, uh, great men, um, very humble. To survive now, uh, Mickey McGill, the founder, and the great Vern Allison. Mm. The others have transitioned on. The great Marvin Jr., who really is the vocal godfather to Teddy Pendergrass, Colonel Abrams and other kind of singers in that way. They mm, all mm. patted themselves after the great Marvin Jr., who I personally watched hold a note for six minutes. Mm, mm, mm. Six minutes. Mm. Six minutes. Brother, unbelievable, unbelievable. Just beautiful men that love God. And that really was at the root of their unity. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they all love God. So they really, their argument was never that deep. You know, they didn't squabble. That's just a little something on the Dells, Brother Joshua. Listen, you've given us supreme wisdom, broken down Adams, cracked Adams, science and all of this. But as a fan of music, and film, the fact that I knew Sister Ruth and didn't know that was at the James, like I'm still blown over there. <laughs> like I'm just, that's going to, I gotta call my dad like as soon as it's over. Cause I'm like, I remember her, the drapes, she did the drapes in my, my parents' house with the little curls and the things. I remember that, I was like, dang, I didn't know that's who that was. Okay, but I wanna thank everybody who's watching and for Captain on the read some of the comments cause we have one more question for you, the important question to let you uh, get to your point. Sister okay. Ruth says, uh, wow, that was, I mean, Sister Sherry Pearl says, uh, wow, what a glorious nation we are. Sister Majeez, uh, Sister Maish, wow, I love this show. Thank you all who are watching, Sister Tana, um, saying, at the X, and thank you all who are watching and continue to show love to the People's Podcast, always together. Um, and thank you, sir, and thank you all who are watching. Okay, our last question is, right now, a lot of people are dealing with financial uh, trouble and a hardship and are being are looking for different resources and outlets just to navigate through society. We People have been speaking, and you spoke last previously about some of your ways that you can assist us as a nation and individually in our families uh, with our credit and things of that nature. Could you expand out? Thank you. I, I will, let me start off by making this comment. I think somewhere around page 59 of Closing the Gap, in their conversation, Minister Jabril talks about, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan answers a question regarding a term that he used called time war. Mm -hmm. Time war. And he said that, you know, there's a certain point in our lives when we are able to master our circumstances. Mm -hmm. 
See? So time warps take place when we don't have the prerequisite knowledge to deal with today's circumstances. So we live in time warps mm. when it was easier for us. This, in my view, is where a lot of us are as a people now. You know, your generation, so fast, so swift, really masses of technology. And a lot of it has to do with your gaming, your PS5s, yes, your sir, that's a fact. Nintendos. That's a fact. Those things really were teaching you technology on a bigger, faster scale than most of your parents. Mm -hmm. So in uh, Dianetics, there's a term Mr. Hubbard used called present time that's right that's right many of us like to talk about history and reminisce because like the christian we're not really equipped to deal in present time yes sir yes sir so circumstances have changed there are terms that i would like to at some point help us to understand called bell in some people think they're wise regarding the stock market. Well, it's going up. You didn't know that Mr. Reagan put in a system where he called it a plunge uh, team, where there were people from the Fed and other major bankers, they would put money in the stock market to keep it propped up to make you think that everything was fine. Mm -hmm. This was in the 80s after the crash of 1987. Mm -hmm. Many of us don't know that President Obama signed into law what is known as the Dodd-Frank law, where these two senators, uh, one senator, pardon me, and one congressman wrote banking laws in the name of changing the banking system because the bailouts of 2008 robbed the American people of their wealth, okay? But what most of us don't know is that there are provisions right now, and you see them on the news today, where the bank has the law and the right to take your money and use it and apply it to their balance sheet. And you can't mm. do a GD thing about it. It's called mm -hmm. a bail in. See, a bail out is when the government gives them money. But a bail in is when they take your money. And you can't do nothing about it. One of the biggest shams in America, Brother Joshua, is my money is FDIC insured. Well, they insure your deposits up to $250,000. That's what they tell you, right? Yes, sir. But the truth is the FDIC don't have enough money to cover every bank account in America. Mm. This is why three or four banks have already closed this year because they wanted to prevent what is known as a bank run where the people all go get their money at the same time and then the, the ATM don't work. You can't get your money out. They close the bank. Well, what happened? All y'all tried to get your money back at the same time. The banking industry uses a term called fracking, where they used to have to keep 10% of their total deposits on account at any time. Well, now they don't have to have 0%. So we as Muslims, we're supposed to be the vanguard in knowledge and leading our people out of the hell that Satan and his imps have put us in. But we refuse to grow into new areas of knowledge. Mm. You feel me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does this make any sense what I'm saying? Absolutely. All right. Now, 
So now, the last 20 years in America, according to a RAND report from a couple of years ago, the RAND report says, and I can send it to you and you can send it to anybody that want to ask about it or in fact challenge me. The RAND report says that the top 1% of America, which is the banking class, have taken and stole from 99% of the American people $50 trillion. That means for 20 years, they have robbed the people of two and a half trillion dollars a year. Well, that's a big word, right? Yes, sir. America every year collects about two and a half trillion dollars in taxes. So the banking industry has robbed the people of more money than the government collects in taxes they're more powerful than the government. Mm, 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 mm. Are you listening to me, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, let me tell you something why this is so important to me. Almighty Allah, Master Fahd Muhammad, wrote a prayer that he gave the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to give to us that he wanted us to say seven times a day. That's right. This is so important to him. And in the prayer, he asked us to ask him for refuge from being what? Overpowered by debt and the oppression, the oppression of, men. of men. Yes, sir. Well, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us that the conjunction and ties two things together. That's right. So being overpowered by debt and being oppressed by men goes together. So the nation is in debt. Therefore, we are oppressed by men. Okay? Yes, sir. So how did this 1% take 99% of the wealth? In fact, on average, this means that in a black household, they taking $1,800 a month out of your pocket. How are they doing that? They charge you exorbitant interest fees. You got a car. Man, I'm going to bust out my Amex or my MasterCard or my visa, but you ain't gonna show us the letter that sent the card. You pay 28%. Mm. You getting got 28%. Brother, do you know what the prime rate on a credit card is in America? Zero percent. Mm. Zero, which means you don't pay no interest. If you got a card that's worth a hundred bands on it. You can buy anything you want and you will never pay interest rates. Mm, mm, mm. That's prime interest in America. So the devil gets you with the credit card. He gets you paying a car note that's crazy as hell. Car may be only $250, but by the time they tack on the interest, you paying $450, $500, $600, $700 because you got to have it. But you don't understand your CIA or your credit report agency report. You don't know how they're robbing you of good credit information on your thing. You don't know that by robbing you of what's on your credit report, the banks charge you higher interest rates. So how are we Muslims and we allow ourselves to be getting by the enemy through usury? Usury is forbidden in Islam. Yes, that's right, that's right. So why do we succumb to it? Because we don't know, okay? Yes, sir. So the 1% rob you through the interest rates because they work hand in hand with Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. So they deny you good credit on your report causing you to pay higher interest rates on everything. Not just car note, not just mortgage, auto insurance. In fact, some people can't even get good medical insurance because you ain't got good credit. Many people lose their lives, Brother Joshua, because they couldn't afford the medical, the health care that they needed to survive because you ain't got good credit. 
Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we wallow in 500, 600. Perfect credit in America is 720, brother. Mm-hmm. Now you got many charlatans that want to teach you credit, but let me tell you something. People like Lexington Law, creditrepair.com, and many other charlatans sprinkled in America, in our community, and even among us, they basically tell a lie Mm. when they dispute what's on your credit report. Mm. He Mm. didn't pay that. That's not his. But you know you was, and you know you lying. Okay. They may get a few things knocked off your credit and you go buy a car. You bought the car and then you slip and you miss a payment. You don't know you just committed bank fraud punishable by up to two years in prison. These is facts, brother. Yes, so sir. they come to us and they say, well, look, we got you on bank fraud. Tell us about the nation. Tell us about Farrakhan. Oh, yeah, Mm -hmm. they got you in the spider's web because you don't know credit and you can't control your appetite for good things. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us that when the devil can find out what you want and feed it to you, he now has mastery over you. Our wants are killing us. So credit is important. Debt management is important. Allah says, and what will make thee comprehend what is the uphill road? That's right. It's the freer slave. Yes, sir. So if you in debt and I can help you, then let me help you free yourself from slavery. I want to give two examples, and then I want to refer people to our website. Yes, sir. I was just on the phone with a fruit of Islam this week. He told a brother that he was struggling to pay his mortgage. I said, have the young man call me. Well, he called me. I'm not gonna say his name, it's not important. I want your listeners to listen to this. When the brother called me, Not only was he behind six months, he signed with his mortgage company an agreement called forbearance. Forbearance is something that's offered under the law that was passed in 2020 by Donald J. Trump. Mm. Okay, called the CARES Act. I won't use that. What it mean? Thank you, Josh. But in in this provision or in this law, There are provisions for every citizen in America to use. That law was deemed, Mr. Biden ended the emergency on the 11th of April. Mm -hmm. And the law states that 120 days after the emergency is declared over, the provisions under the CARES Act expire. Mm. You didn't know that there are provisions right now that are going to expire Wednesday at midnight Mm. that will stop payment on your credit card, on your car note, and even your mortgage. Now, going back to this soldier, he told me that he signed a forbearance agreement with his mortgage company. Well, forbearance means that, yeah, we'll stop the payment. But when they start up again, you're now going to have to make a balloon payment for whatever months you did not make a payment. Mm. So not only was he behind six months, he owed a balloon payment of $10,500. I said, listen, get me on the phone with your mortgage company. Now, don't unmute me. But as I'm going to give you a script to say to them. I want to listen. And for everything they say to you, I'm going to guide you with the help of Allah on what to say. His account now is in review. What that means is, number one, no foreclosure proceedings can take place while it's under review. 
Second of all, it means that when it comes out review and with Allah's help is approved, he just put $100,000 back in his pocket for the duration of the mortgage. Mm. You didn't even hear me. Yes, sir. I didn't say $10. I didn't say $1,000. I didn't even say $10,000. I said $100,000 because they're going to drop his mortgage $400 a month and they're going to wrap on the back end the balloon payment of $10,500. Mm. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the knowledge that God wants us to have. Mm -hmm. Again, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, during his historic, the war of Armageddon has begun message. He talked about debt and asked us how many of us got debt. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have no right to have a debt that you cannot pay for. But it went right over our heads. But we didn't know that God was raising men to come after his servant, who would guide us into knowledge on what he meant and how to use it. No Muslim should lose their home to foreclosure. There are 46 violations by the mortgage banking industry that the government has already proven that they're guilty of. Did you know Wells Fargo was found guilty and fined $4 billion for illegal auto repossessions? No, sir. No, sir. Hell no, we don't know that. 46 infractions by the mortgage banking industry. All you got to do is pick one applies to you. You ain't got to prove nothing. The government already did it. Nobody is supposed to lose their home. Mm. I don't give a damn how far in debt you are. But I'll say this. If you go to our website. Yes, sir. Called True creditliteracy.org you'll find a little book on there it costs a few pennies but i sent the book to a great pioneer in tuscaloosa alabama he bought the book he called me back he said brother wali the savings have already begun these is facts. Uh, yes, sir. We've been helping people all over America stop payment. This ain't no hustle. Because what you gain is more than what you can ever pay. I just want you to buy the book. If you know somebody that's in trouble right now, send them to true credit literacy, not dot com, dot org. We got a very small ebook on there. Like I said, it costs a few pennies. But if you download the book and follow the instructions at the back, I guarantee you that some, if not all of your creditors will cease taking money from you from three to six to 12 months for the next year. And they have to report your payments on time and in good standing. Mm -hmm. Many of us didn't know that there are 46 laws and programs by the federal government designed not only to eliminate your bad debt, but to help you increase your credit rating. These are facts. Beautiful. Some of you got good credit scope, but this is what my teacher said. Perfect credit in America is a 720. If you got a 720, you should be able to pull out a credit card worth $100,000 on it. So your derogatory accounts on your credit file are preventing you from having access to capital. And many of us, and I say this, and I don't know if I said it before, but the Bible says in the 12th chapter of Exodus, somewhere around the 35th verse, that the children of Israel did all according to the word of Moses when he instructed them to borrow from the Egyptian people. Mm, 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 mm. 
but you got to be taught how to borrow. I know the devil is telling you on the news, the credit is shrinking. No, it ain't shrinking. It's shrinking for you. It's shrinking for those who have poor credit. But anybody that owns a mortgage company, mortgages is flying off the shelf. Mm, so mm. It, ain't, it ain't dwindling for them. It's dwindling for you with your bad credit. Mm -hmm. So why not start your journey to better credit? Download the ebook. It costs a few pennies, but I assure you, if you download the book and follow the instructions, and remember this though, Allah says in the Holy Quran, he turns you toward that which you turn yourself. Yes, so sir. when you're looking for negative, you're going to find it. But if you're looking for good and you're looking for God, you're going to find him too. So your perspective will determine how successful you are in following the instructions in our ebook that's prepared for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rick Captain, and giving us great information. Got sister, I'm butchering your name, sisters, but your name is Mayoshi and Brother Harvey. Both are asking, can you repeat the site again? And he said, What's the site again? They missed it. Could you uh, is that brother time? Harvey, the, the, the brother that rules on Facebook? Oh man, I enjoy his post so much. I don't know if it's him, but I think so. Yes, sir. The, the website is called True Credit Literacy, all lowercase, one word, true, T R U E credit, C R E D I T, literacy, L I T E R A C Y dot O. RG. Get that book. Download it. It ain't but a few pennies. The first call, you're going to save 10 times the cost of the book. Because our people, our so called congressmen and politicians, well, as you got it right there in your lessons, why does the devil keep our people illiterate? So he can use them as a tool and a slave. He mm. keeps them blind to themselves so he can master them. And illiterate means ignorant. So these no good for nothing politicians ain't came back and told us nothing that they voted for. Yes, but the law been in effect for three years and is about to expire in about four days. When you go on our website, you're going to see a countdown clock. It's real. It's accurate. Stop paying those bills. Give yourself a breather. Put some of that money in your pocket. The devil is taking $1,800 a month in exorbitant fees and interest rates from you. You'll never make progress paying on your bills the way you pay on them now. They'll never come down. But if you can put a pause on them, not through forbearance, but through deferment. Language is everything. The old devil on the phone with my brother said, terminology is everything, sir. Mm -hmm. Like Dr. Mm -hmm. King said, we got to get the language right. That's right. That's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> forbearance is not the way to go deferment is. Learn about deferment from your brother. Any of y'all that know me, I don't have no halo on my head, but you'll be hard pressed to find somebody that can call me a liar with some substantive evidence. Because I always knew I was not scared of you. So why in the hell would I lie to you and give you power over me by lying? Yes, sir. Like yes, our sir. father said, it makes us cheap. If you don't like what I'm saying, go to hell. <laughs> like your dad used to say, back up and live. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come forth and die. Right, so truecreditliteracy.org, believers. And Josh, I want to give you my number. Yes, sir. They can call me. But if you ain't downloaded the book, don't call me. I look, 
The first question I'm going to ask you, Assalamu alaikum, did you get the book? If you ain't got the yes, book, sir. don't call me. Yes, I'm sir. not a chit chatty type of person. That's right. I believe in our laws. I believe in the general order. Talk to no one. That's right. Except in the line of duty. If I'm not helping you out of debt, what we got to talk about? Mm -hmm. Right now, the biggest problem in the nation is debt. And it's literally overpowering us. It's robbing us of the spirit of God. We can't even smile. Facts. Thank you, brother Joshua. You got any more questions for your brother? Yes, sir, but we're going to hold those off for another future interview, inshallah. Can we get the number from you, Burkett? Yes. Now, I want you to put a footnote, an asterisk. Only call this man after you downloaded the book. Yes, sir. And make sure you tell your family and your loved ones about the information. Do you know that we can literally turn the tide of debt and oppression in the community? And we got a few days to do it, but we got more things to help you. 312-788-7350. Again, that's 312-788-7350. Excellent. Okay, thank you so much. And um, people are showing you love, so Sherry Pearl. Thank you for watching, Brother Harvey. To man, you are teaching beloved sister Mayoshi. Um, is saying she she put the uh, link in the chat and thank you everyone who continues to watch. Um, we have been greatly uh, fed today on a Saturday. Usually our interviews on Sunday, but today we got a special uh, treat for you all this Saturday. Thank you, brother Captain. May Allah continue to bless you, your family, um, and friends and circle. Uh, man, I'm just inspired. Really inspired us today, and uh, can't wait to put this on YouTube. Um, man, I'm, I'm super excited today. I'm super excited. I, I, I hope, my brother, that we can get it out because there really are things that we can do right now to kill these credit card bills, our mortgages, and our car loans. And I'm not making it up. Had I been a little bit more, I would have took the people to the law itself and read it. But our people who are leaders or so-called leaders, they don't get you the information. But we as students of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of his minister, we have to be the watchmen on the wall. Yes, we got to tell our people what's going on. We can't wait for nobody else to do it. Like brother Collett used to say, if not me, who? That's if right. not now, when? And we got to be fired up about it, man. I'm fired up about relieving the believers of debt. You damn right I'm fired up about. Because I see this as an extension of the work of God. Because once the believer is free of debt, brother, we can build. Because when you are relieved of debt and you learn what credit is for, it's not to buy stuff. I got a new car. I gotta go get me a purse. Let me go get me a watch. That's not what credit's for. Credit is to help fuel your ideas. Mm. And then your ideas, from the idea you profit, then you buy stuff. That's why America has laws for its citizens. The only person with a debt problem is a corporation or a company, a private citizen is never supposed to have a debt problem. That's right. And that's I right. know that Mr. Biden wants you to think that they're stopping him from passing a law to get student loan debt. I can show you all day, every day, and twice on Sunday how to stop your payments on your student loan now. Now. That's, what I need to hear. that's what we're talking about. Hey, you know, I got you. Yes, for sir. real, for real. I got yes, you. We can talk about that because your, your crew ain't, oh, they in debt for real. That's right. And you too scared to continue education because you afraid to go into more debt. But we can make them student loan payments stop on the dime. 
You hear me? Yes, sir. Last point. You know, them three letter people love visiting the Muslims. The IRS. Yes, sir. You didn't know that the IRS has one of the best depth debt filtration programs in America. Mm. You should never pay the IRS a penny if you owe them. I mean, if you owe them $500,000, you shouldn't pay them a penny. Because when you understand how to use the right debt filter, that can work for 20 years. And after that, they forgive the payment. Mm. But y'all got to start getting in touch with Brother Wali because we got something else to share with you. Talking about the history is great, but if you ain't got power to deal with today, no wonder you stuck in yesterday. Yes, sir. Let's get the power to deal with today. Then history becomes sweeter because we can extract the true lessons from that history and use it to move forward to build a nation. Thank you, brother Joshua. I hope that- the conversation was all right and for your listeners as well as yourself, brother. Thank you. I thank a lot for your family. I love you, you all. Love and you anytime more, you need your brother, just, just hit me up, man. I'm right here. Yes, sir. And thank you all for watching. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off of the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Thank you all for watching.